Hi, I'm Father John Hatcher, the president of uh, St. Francis Mission, and I'm down here in beautiful Mobile, Alabama in early April, where the birds are already singing and the trees and the flowers are out, so it's nice. I'm here because I graduated 50 years ago from the Jesuit school, uh, Spring Hill College in Mobile, and so I became an important person. And the way you do that is live long enough and they give you a medal. You don't have to do anything else. It's terrific. I thought I'd take this opportunity in this nice place to bring you up to date about the mission, a little bit on things that uh, have happened there and some few things that are going to happen there. One of the important things that occurred this year is with religious education. You know, for three or four years we were unable to go into St. Francis Indian School to teach the kids religious education. We were blocked by their board and uh, in the fall they reversed themselves. And now we have uh, religious education from, for kindergarten through the eighth grade and probably will expand into the lower high school grades next year. Uh, the re result of that is we're seeing 375 kids a week for religious education, and that's simply terrific. It's a little overwhelming on the staff that is taking care of that, but it's very gratifying to know that people want us there, the parents want us there, and we're able to reach so many new people that we couldn't reach in the last few years. So I congratulate uh, Jen Blackbear and the staff and the JVs and all the people who work on that program because they work very, very hard to uh, bring Christ to these young children and we're hoping that through that that we reach their parents and grandparents and their siblings. Another important thing that has occurred this year I think was a real step forward. Uh, Geraldine Provincial and Jim Stans who have been working on the recovery family recovery program for several years brought that in to the adult jail. They were invited to come in and they go once a week uh, and they spend an hour and a half there and they do parts of the family recovery program. After the end of six or eight weeks, uh, those people who complete the program get a certificate. They see sometimes 150 people in three different pods of the jail. Jim takes some, Geraldine takes some. Uh, this has been, a, I just can't describe how the men and women who are in prison there, who are not there for, because they're hardened criminals, they're there because of, of uh, you know, drug and alcohol problems or the results of that, uh, how they've responded so positively to this and how they watch our people come in. They, we are the only program that's consistently going into the jail. Every week we're there, every week we bring up a, a, a necessary piece of program that helps people heal, gives them advancement in their life. And when these people get a certificate, you know, one person said, this is terrific. It means I've done something. And uh, I'm very, very pleased with that. We're going to continue that program. However, I think we're also going to try to expand it so that the next year, beginning with, the, uh, with uh, September, we will be able to take people as they get out of the prison system and begin to work with them on aftercare. Some people have received such remarkable insight into themselves while in prison going through this program. That would be very helpful, very helpful to have some kind of counseling program or and or have some type of group where, where the people can get together and support one another. So that's the next thing we want to get into. Because if we can heal people up and we can keep them positive about themselves, well, we can help them find work and we can help them get a hold on life that they haven't had before. I think that's just going to be terrific. The third thing I think we need to talk about is our school, Sapoon Catholic Academy. Uh, the kids have done really well. We have 23 students this year, kindergarten through sixth grade, and we tested them at the beginning of September and tested them right uh, before Christmas break. And every one of those kids had moved up a grade and that doesn't mean they're at grade level yet, but they've done extremely well. 
and we're going to be testing them again uh, this spring in about two months and uh, we'll see how that goes but I'm expecting that they will continue to grow some few kids actually moved up a grade into one second grade or went into the third grade and we have a couple of other people who are just on the cusp of doing it. Kids love the place, they're safe, there's no bullying, they come at 8 in the morning, leave at 5, sometimes the parents have to drag them out of there, they love it. And they're learning and that's really what I am most happy with and uh, we're incorporating of course religious uh, uh, Catholic religion into every day, as well as we have uh, Lakota language and Lakota culture and Lakota way of life. So we're trying to bring up kids who are both immersed in their culture and proud of it, and also very Catholic. And I think uh, over the long haul, that's going to make a difference. You know, sometimes I have people come and tell me, uh, especially sometimes people who don't know the reservation well, especially in South Dakota, they will say, well, why don't you take these programs and build them into a big uh, program and let the tribe take it over and make it happen and so forth. And I say to them, you know, the dysfunction we have to face and address on the reservation is so severe. You have to sort of be a place kicker if you're going to get full. Just running up the field, you're going to get mashed. You, know? you have to have a plan. You have to institute it over time. It's going to take time. It's going to be slower than you think. But as you see progress, you begin to get encouraged that uh, as these folks, Native people, get empowered and get uh, confidence in what they can do, they begin to draw more people in. So my piece as president of the mission is always to look out 10 or 15 years from now and say, what's this going to look like if we persevere in the programs, these wonderful programs that we've instituted? You can talk about the suicide crisis hotline, the museum, uh, talk about the radio station, you can talk about all of these programs coming together, and then the education piece, that over time it will make a real difference. And uh, I really appreciate your help with this, and you, you've been generous, and uh, know that many of you are very enthusiastic about what we're doing and I know that we have your prayers as well as your financial aid. One other announcement to make is that happily we're going to brand, get a brand newly ordained priest next summer, Jacob Bodega. He's a wonderful guy. He's very excited about coming. He'll be working partially in the school and partially in the other ministries, of course, sacramental ministry, but hopefully with, uh, with uh, uh, religious education and perhaps with the jail ministry. But that's a real uh, affirmation of the Society of Jesus that we're going to be there. We're not pulling out. You know, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, the other thing to say is that, uh, and this was remarkable to me, last year and again this year, the Diocese of Rapid City gave us $75,000 for the school. What does that mean? That means that the bishop and the diocese sees our program as valuable, innovative, and wants to support it. That's a remarkable thing to me. And uh, I'm grateful to uh, Bishop Bruce and to the diocese for their, their complete support about what we're doing. And, uh, and again, I'm grateful to you and we'll have other little updates throughout the summer, and I'll keep you posted. Thank you very much.